Now, in the previous video, we talked about the differences in the anatomy and the functions of the structures of male and female genitalia in, in mammals. And we also talked, hint at the idea of puberty, which is a, a process that initiates once the child or once the um, uh, organism is mature enough to actually carry carry um, ch children and actually have a good chance of having that child survive into adulthood herself which is why you uh, it won't actually necessarily happen until or be activated by the brain uh, through endocrine messages until the uh, organism is developed enough in order to be able to carry and care for the young and so that's typically why all mammals have a maturing process where they are growing and developing both in physical and, and mental and uh, maturity and so to actually have uh, the ability to do that now in males and females uh, there are incidences of gamete production as early as seven years old and uh, even before in especially in males but females usually start earlier and they will be most females will already have some of the puberty aspects be kicking in at high gear by the time they're 10 and by the time they're 13 most females will undergo their, their, their first menstrual cycle and, uh, and initiate puberty and then from that point on it will become more and more uh, accurate and in, until at once a month you actually undergo the whole process and while males by the time they get uh, to 12 years old on average most males are study the process and by the time they're 14 15 they're actually producing millions of sperm every day and there definitely can be normal uh, fatherhoods um, and all the changes will be happening to the body as well it's not just the changes in the actual physical characteristics but it's changing them to mature the organism to adulthood and secondary sexual characteristics which are in charge of attracting the opposite sex in order to actually initiate sexual intercourse also also will take place and also all the secondary characteristics will have to do with childbearing for females such as enlarging the breasts and the hip area uh, the addition of fat to specific areas in males the the growing of muscles in uh, specific areas the uh, on both genders the growing of hair in all, other in new places around the body and so these changes will happen in puberty and it will be associated with with the development of the organism uh, when it gets to an age when it's actually ready to have children and as soon as puberty starts technically the, that that organism is capable of, of carrying a child now in, in in modern society that doesn't necessarily equate to being able to actually care for the young so that's the dilemma that we have because we are now capable in wanting even because of the hormonal activity to actually engage in sexual activity and we're starting to get attracted to those secondary sexual characteristics but it doesn't necessarily mean that we are ready to care for the young especially when we're still dependent on, on about our, our parents in modern society it's not until you're much older that you actually are able to have a job um, my my fiance is still in school even though she's out she's she's a um, not yet in her 30s and she still wouldn't be able to stop everything she's doing to care for young so education <clears throat> tells you to uh, think and use your mind and make sure you're careful because if you're engaged in sexual activity you, go, you have a chance of having a child and so you have to use protection and even better perhaps even abstain uh, if you don't want to have a child if you're not ready for it because that's what sex is designed for to make a baby and so nature will work try to make its course and actually have a baby especially if you're not careful and so <coughs> uh, and also not to mention that sexual intercourse comes with other uh, problems emotional connections because we are evolved to actually make meaning out of this act and so you connect to people at a different level and when you do this whether or not you think it's going to be something silly and you don't give importance to it deep down you actually are affected by 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 that and if you're not ready to deal with the emotional and even there's no such thing as being ready to deal with that everybody hurts when they they go through the process of rejection they're commonly associated with, with relationships when things don't work out when people don't actually necessarily jive and it's very complicated I mean, when you put sex in the mix it becomes even more complicated because you it's private and we're we're our brains are designed to make that private and um it creates a lot of problems and then there's also diseases which are transmitted through sexual activity and and not all diseases are actually um, going to be blocked by the use of a, of a condom so there's a lot of problems of actually engaging sexual activity before you're ready and so you know save it for when it's when you're ready to either have fun or actually have the uh, even better do it within the context of a relationship that you actually know it's going to last for the rest of your life and I'm telling you, 
even adults don't know that. If you look at the divorce rate in the U.S., 50% of the, almost 50% of all, all marriages end up in divorce. And so we're not very good at picking partners for the rest of our lives. And so if you're a teenager, you're probably even worse at that. I'm sorry to say, but uh, you still have to go with a lot of maturing. And so <coughs> be careful and make good decisions. And the best decision you can make is to wait. Now, the... Uh, Let's talk about the menstrual cycle, which actually happens in, fe in females. Now, we don't have to get too specific about this, but uh, let's look at the, t uh, first of all, it's a 28-day cycle in where you, you will get um, six days of six day uh, four days of preparation for fertilization, uh, five, four days when fertilization can take place and the egg will succeed, and then uh, several days where they stay dormant and then, pre and then preparing for the process to start, and then other days where the actual uh, menstrual cycle, menstru menstruation takes place and you actually uh, um, you undergo menses, which is the bleeding of the, of the, uh, out of the vagina. Now, why is this happening? Why is this a 28-day cycle? Well, it all has to do with the um, producing sperm. Now, there is a theory that it's developed because of something to do with tides, because it matches the moon cycle, but it, must, it may just be coincidental. But either way... This is how it happens. And look at the ovarian cycle here at the top. You see that you go from that primary spermatocyte, or, sorry, secondary spermatocyte, which was produced during meiosis 1, all right, into, into a secondary, uh, sorry, primary oocyte, which was produced during meiosis 1, when the girl was still a baby, and then your ovaries are storing all of that, and then once a month, one of them are induced by hormonal activity into creating an actual... Uh, follicle. Now this follicle will grow, the egg will develop, it will undergo meiosis too, the polar body will die, and eventually it will formate the actual egg. And then that will pop out of the ovary, and then the, o the egg is going to be uh, developed. Now the egg will still develop even further into a corpus lathium. If it's not fertilized, it will actually become a corpus albicans, which is a dead egg, and it will be ejected during the menstruation cycle. And so in order for fertilization to successfully happen, it will have to happen somewhere between here and here uh, in order for, for, for the zygote to form. If you wait too long and the egg is already becoming destroyed by hormonal activity, you're actually going to, uh, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to make a baby. Now, also notice that temperature in the female body actually rises, spikes right before ovulation, and then it do drops again if the egg is not fertilized. And this, all of this is, is to prepare the egg for the accelerated process of division that's necessary in the beginning. So the extra little degrees is, is to that. So when you notice a spike, that no, that's the fertilization period. That's when you, the, the girl would be fertile, basically, <coughs> when her temperature is the highest. So if you want to avoid fertilization, it would be when the temperature is the lowest. And if you want to actually have a baby, that's when you would have to actually uh, perform sexual activity in order to have the baby. Now, notice that it's actually mimicked in, it's all uh, controlled by the brain. And a gland, in the, in the, right underneath your brain, which is called the pituitary gland, or, and it actually responds to brain waves activities once a month to produce an, a, a hormone called a luteinizing hormone, or LH hormone, and another hormone is called follicular stimulating hormone. And what this will do is it, once they start to spike up, you actually make the follicle grow inside the ovary. And when they spike up completely, that induces the fertilization process, sorry, the ov ovulation, which is the actual egg leaving the, the, uh, the uh, ovaries. And then they will drop again, and that drop will be... Will, it means oh, these hormones are actually inducing the ovaries to actually make the meiosis 2. And f so that's what's happening here. When they start to spike up, it induces meiosis 2. When they spike up completely, it induces ovulation. Now, notice that ov ovarian hormones also are produced during this process. Now, the first thing that will happen is that the ovaries will spike what is called the estradiol. And what will happen with the estradiol is that as soon as it spikes, the the endometrium wall of the uterus will start to producing uh, more uh, covering in preparation for that egg in case it becomes fertilized to attach to this ovarian wall. So <coughs> this is all to create a cushioning for the, for the embryo to grow. 
Now, that's what the estradiol will do. At the same time, progesterone will, pick, will, will, will kick in. As a response to the spike in estradiol, the, a progesterone will, will be produced, and it will create this, this um, very thick wall. And if you actually look at the uterine wall, uh, it will start, as soon as the follicle will start, it will start to pick up and become more and more rich in blood vessels and also all these things in preparation for the thing. And then if fertilization doesn't happen and you, and you hit the corpus albicans, progesterone, estradiol, everything goes down. And then the uterus responds by ejecting all of the material in what's called a menses. And then that's why it's bloody because it's, it's, it's tissue and blood vessels full of blood which were actually ready, getting ready for the, for the um, process. Now, you can see it here too. Pri uh, right before the menstrual cycle, you have a, a lot of blood vessels and tissue getting ready for the uh, attachment of the egg. But if it doesn't happen, you hit the menstrual cycle and you go back to normal. And then little by little, we'll go back up again. And then after ovulation, it will really spike up again. And so this is a cycle that repeats itself once a month. And again, if you look at the endometrial wall differences, the egg is there and it's going to be growing at the first days. And then when it's actually in the fallopian tube, that means the ovulation already happens, then the, the, the wall will, will, will be coming full of blood. But then as, as the egg fails and it, and it becomes a corpus albicans, it actually... The menstrual flow will happen and all the extra layering will just be ejected and with it will eject the corpus albicans of the failed egg. Now what that means is that the days that you are bleeding, what, you, what, you're sending, what the girl is sending out is that wall of material which was going to be used to, to, to house the egg. And then after that you're going to have a period that you're not fertile because all you're doing is you're preparing to grow the egg. Uh, inside the follicle and in response to the new increase into the on the uh, hormones of the coming from the pituitary gland and then once the egg is ready you actually undergo ovulation and then that means the egg is going to be here in the fallopian tube traveling towards the uterus meanwhile the uterus is, is getting bloodier and, and, and bloodier and so this for, in order for this to for the fertilization to be successful somewhere around in, on that time Sexual activity has to take place in order for the sperm to actually successively meet the egg in the fallopian tube. And then if that doesn't happen, uh, we'll, you will go back at the beginning and bleed again. And so that's how the menstrual cycle actually works. And that's why every month, girls undergo dementis. And uh, it all has to do with the preparation for potentially having a baby. And so this will happen once a month. And then eventually the girls will run out of those eggs, uh, meiosis ones, secondary, uh, uh, prime. Uh, secondary oocytes produced during meiosis 1 and then you're not going to undergo meiosis 1 anymore and which means there's no point of doing all of this and then you hit menopause when you run out of those eggs. And that's pretty much how that works. Alright, on the next video we'll talk about how the fertilization and the, hum and the actual development of the embryo takes place.